I just got back from the doctors and they told me I have a deadly dose of Lucky Time Explosion! <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? It is Friday, the 15th of March. It is. Yeah, we have Mar a special guest today, Eric LaMarca. I pick things up and put them down. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Eric? How you doing? That's what we do. Yeah. Yes. So Eric uh, is one of the artists here at Solus Studio and is a budding curator as well, has been putting on art shows, making his own art shows. You've been on a pretty crazy journey for the last, like, what, year and a half now? How well, actually. Now? Two years? Well, three? I've been working with you guys for, like, over three years now. And wow. Three. Curating for, like, two. Right. And just, like, shitting my pants for eternity. <laughs> as, as one does. As one does. Yeah. <laughs> We're, I hear you. Yeah. We have um, Gia Love. I think she's going by Gia Love now. Gia yeah. show is up right now at, at um, Solace here. It's a spiritual experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's sort of, I think she's got a little influence from you, too. Yeah. You know, she... Uh, she um i was talking to her one day and mm -hmm. she's like i want to create my own stuff i was like all right and she's like well how do you do it and i showed her how to do it and next thing i know she was doing it yeah <laughs> like literally it's kind of cool <laughs> it's though great. isn't it isn't yeah it cool to, to feel that i mean I, you know there's a lot i feel like there's a lot of artists bickering all the time they're like you're biting my style you're stealing from me but i don't i find it like super um complimentary i love it like i'll go on tiktok and i'll do my you know, abstract TikTok paintings. Yeah. And then I saw a couple people now on TikTok, like, will do, like, my style. Like, they'll use the big black brush strokes and they'll put the red dot uh, on it. That's you, though. That's so yeah. you. And they're doing that. And I'm like, oh, my God. They're just, like, imitating what I'm doing. And I'm just, like, super flattered about it. I, I love think, it. I think I told you a story recently about it, and I'll, I'll just shoot it off quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, again, I'm Morgan Lappin. I'm a collage artist. And that's I, true. I run something called Brooklyn Collage Collective. Mm -hmm. uh, and years ago, we were having a group show, and I had this big idea to go to all these different uh, fast food restaurants and get different fry boxes. And then I was going to create a collage within each of these different you know, fry boxes. And sure enough, for the next show, uh, this amazing artist comes up with this piece, which is a McDonald's fry box with like fingers coming out of it. And the sick person that I was, and this is the only time, and, and I never did this again. <laughs> Confession time. Um, but I reached out to him. I'm like, I can't show that piece. And he so was you can, You're saying he can't show that piece. Yeah, I told him he can't show that piece. <laughs> oh, and he was like, why? Are. I was like, well, <clears throat> I had this idea, and I explained to him where I was going to basically do what you're going to do. and, and um, <laughs> But didn't. <laughs> and he's like, and I, I, I was pretty unhinged. And he was like... I, how was I supposed to know? Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you? He's like, I was like, I know, I know. And then, of course, I, you know, the next day I was like, oh man, I'm a lunatic. And I wrote back, I was like, listen, I'm really sorry. You could show the piece, blah, blah, blah. And ironically, that was like the only piece that sold at the show. And I was like, right, because you you're curating the show. And I bit my finger, I started to read, and I was like, look at me on that way. I didn't do that. No, but it, it ended well. But I was like, clearly recognize it. Like, right. you can't do that. I mean, no one could read each other's <clears throat> minds. There's tons of people. It's just going to happen. And yeah. sometimes when you work closely with someone, there is like an inspiration that travels, even though you may have not done that exact idea. Throughout sharing ideas, your mind could become one and, and go into a similar direction, I feel like sometimes, yeah. just through influence, yeah. and, and it just happens, so you have to be open to it and accept it. If someone comes close to your own work, don't bite your knuckle and bleed on yourself, just yeah. accept it. Yeah, and you know, Gia, you gotta give mm -hmm. her credit, because what she's doing is, besides doing the symmetrical imaging, uh -huh. she's using Google Docs, right? So like, she's like, let's say I wanna to go to uh, Machu Picchu, or whatever it's called. Machu Picchu. Or, Machu Picchu. She'll like go to the Google Maps of it, like zoom in to like a rock formation formation in it. Right. And then like, she'll capture that and then do the symmetrical imaging from that. So that's kind of, you know, it's unique. Um, the symmetrical imaging I started off with is with my with my photography. So right. they are two different things, but yeah. she's using that foundation of a medium, and so that's kind of cool to see her like branch out and do her own thing. And like I'm looking at her work. How first off, how you guys put stuff on the walls is amazing, and the paper oh, you're thank using. You, thank you. It, it's almost like there's almost like a mosaic tile type of feel to it, which yeah. is really really cool. That from paper. You get that. Shout out so. to Moab. Yeah. yeah. Slick let's, Rock let's, Silver. Let's, 
So what's the deal? The, there's, there's, this, there's there's a certain situation. So I use this paper, Slick yeah. Rock Silver. You know, I, I, I work here at Solus now, yeah. and I, I'm learning a lot Discovered about Discovered this paper. And um, it's such beautiful paper, and I, I fell in love with it. And then I found out that, what is it called? It's Moab Slick Rock. In, yeah, silver. It's, it's discontinued. Discontinued. There's also pearl, right? There is there a pearl is as pearl, well. But it's yeah. white. It is not right. like mirror material silver. So I lost my mind. I was like, discontinued? What? I was thinking about finding the mines that create the material to make it. Anyways, one thing led to another. I called uh, B&H because, you know, you go to B&H. So I called them up. I'm like, what's the skinny on the Moab Slick Rock Silver? And they're like, well, we know it's been discontinued, but hold on, Mr. Lappin. It's going to come back. Oh, and I said, gonna, no. Wait, what? It's not going to be the same. It's not going to be. We, we, it, well, I hope. So I'm still waiting for the call from B&H to let us know that Slick Rock Silver is back in production and we can continue these beautiful mirror so, prints. Yeah. Is this like a, a Taco Bell pizza or a McRib type of fiasco where no. they bring it back but it's not quite the same? You we remember? don't know yet. That's a great <clears throat> question, though. Uh, McRib. Yeah. You know about the McRib, the reason why the McRib goes away and comes back? No. No? Because you want it more people. and more. <laughs> no. <laughs> you think, you, some people think it's like a marketing ploy or whatever. No, it's not a marketing ploy. There's like um, an automatic timer. Whenever pork drops below a certain price, the McRib comes back. Because it's oh. it's the cheapest compressed pork, so the the McRib being on the menu at McDonald's is dependent on the price of pork. Oh, I thought it was on the price of, of um, what you call that stuff? Sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Sawdust has gone down to eight cents a pound. Let's do the McRib. Ah, <laughs> essentially, yes, actually, because like that is it is like um, this pork sawdust, right? Compressed into a rib shape. You just blew my mind. What about the the pink stuff? Remember the pink stuff? Pink slime. The pink oh. slime. What do they use that for? For everything. Well, they used to be McNuggets until <sighs> until they started doing like the hundred percent chicken meat McNuggets. That's right. Pink slime. My favorite pink slime thing is um, there's <laughs> there's like this I don't know like representative or senator or something some you know Republican uh, middle America you know conservative dude. When the pink slime fiasco hit, he releases a video where he was just like. He was so angry. He was like, because they're banning it everywhere. And he was like, pink slime is a wholesome, safe American product that we've been consuming safely for 50 years. What is like so what? Mad about do you, it. And do I'm you, like, yeah, man, yeah, I want my slime. Did, I need my pink slime. Do you know what the slime is? It's just like, yeah, it's like a meat slurry. It's like, imagine <laughs> all the pieces, all the pieces that they couldn't like sell you, they just throw into a giant like super blender and slurry it up and then fry that. And There's opportunity here. They though. should have it yeah. like, you know, like the uh, slurping machine would be like, you know, like the red for cherry and the blue. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that is. But then they should just have the frozen meat slurries. Yeah, the brown for the, liver. The pink. You oh oh man I'm yeah. I'm getting so hungry right now I want the slime we gotta stop doing these before breakfast well yeah. McDonald's what they should do is they have an opportunity to do a fifth you know a half and half the oh. half and half chicken nugget half slurry half chicken meat uh, you know? the fucked like, up thing is I would so buy that and they could do like the two percent it's only two percent slurry but that two percent oh. just like makes you go oh yeah you need those chemicals <laughs> we've been getting fed those chemicals for so long that if we started to mm -hmm. eat healthy we just die yeah now i need them. don't you see McDonald's. all the vegans they're all eating healthy like haha idiots and then like the next day like oh wait am i alive anymore it's because our body <laughs> and i and wait I wait wait, wait 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 rewind what there's no epidemic of vegans dying all of a sudden what are, are you, you talking sure about sure about that? <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure you're just making that up did you hear about the oat so. slurry fiasco no tell me about what's the oat slurry fiasco well it's about to happen so you know how we like oat milk in our coffee? Some people, they like almond milk. Yeah. Now they're going to do oat slurry McNuggets. So well, that's <laughs> slurry <laughs> slime. It's, it's, you know, it's natural. It's, as long uh, as it tastes the same it's and it's vegan, crispy. Vegan slurry. Yeah, gross. They have, uh, <laughs> well, they have the vegan KFC McNuggets that came out. They have the vegan nuggets from KFC. They were beyond nuggets. And they looked and apparently tasted exactly like pencil erasers, like just square, oh, you know, oh, white. Those were so good. Erasers. <laughs> no, but seriously, I used to like love they them. they worked well and you they see, how, many, how many pencil erasers do you think you've eaten in your life? Well, there? so when I was a kid, and this is a true story, nice. I, I like I could flash back to the third grade right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, but only thing is, like, my chair would be on the floor. I used to fall backwards. But I used to love the inside of the magic markers. 
and I would get like the color all over <laughs> and I used to chew on the pencils, but I would freak myself out because when I would chew on the pencil, you know the little metal part right before the eraser part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get your teeth on that when you're enjoying the, the it's pencil. It's like an electrical shock. Dude, yeah. And then the thing, I used to take the, um, the I used to bite off the, um, you know, the eraser part and I used to just chew on that like bubble gum and I could never get in trouble because I wasn't chewing bubble gum no. in class. I was just erasing my... Brain. comprehension of the class <laughs> that's not even gonna wind up on the underneath of the desk i mean it won't even stick you know? I used you're to probably bite. just gonna digest i it. used to bite those metal collars that hold on the eraser oh, yeah my God. i would bite those and squish in those out and i wouldn't chew on the rest of the pencil i would just oh, bite and it. squish the metal what's part. wrong with you two i don't know <laughs> i remember <laughs> in, uh, we're artists this is why this, junior you think high. a lot of creativity came from <clears throat> from eating these erasers well I, this is a good one. In junior high, I saw this kid. He failed the math class, or a, a math test. It was three pages. He ate the whole fucking thing. He ate the whole test. He was like, and all that was left was like the staple with a little bit of like fluff of paper sticking up. But this kid, that could like, have been extra credit. He was like, he was like crying too. He was like crying oh, while he while was eating, he was eating it. it. Oh, I was laughing really hard, and now it's sad. Why? Maybe. I can't. I don't know either. I mean, he was it crying was as he was eating the paper, like, I have to do this. Yeah, <laughs> he was like all teary eyed and like emotionally distraught. And he was like, it started slow and then it became bigger pieces of the pages. Was until it like it was take gone. one for the team type of thing? <laughs> like, I don't know. I think, I think maybe uh, things were happening back at home. Like, if he went home and failed the test, his parents made him eat the test. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, hope, I mean, you know. I I hope do, he's, can I, I hope get you out okay. of school these days if you just like cry and eat your homework? Do you think they'll like send you to the, the clay room where you can play with clay? <laughs> <laughs> I used to just be like, I don't feel good. And I would go to the nurse's office and sleep for like yeah. two hours. That's funny. And then go back. I would always draw in school. Like we do um the we would do like the, the spelling bee, you know, they would they'd make all the kids stand up in the room and I would immediately fail the spelling bee. Because if you get if you get up there and they're like and and you're like Z, uh, <laughs> then they go okay sit down for the next forty five minutes, and I'm like sweet so I'll just sit down and like draw <laughs> and like watch all these kids do the spelling bee I would always fail it on purpose. Did you and sit in the back doodle. or the front in the class? I sat in the back um, because I had bad eyesight and I couldn't see the board, so I sat in the back so I wouldn't have to see the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but I eventually got glasses and stuff. But yeah, I was doing a lot of drawing and stuff. But I wanted to ask you about um about coming into your creative practice a little later on in life, right? Oh, you yeah. were, you've been doing this now, we've been working together for like three years or so, but when you came first came to Solace, you were like, um, you know, this is something new for me. Yeah, you know, they say the mother of invention is need, right? Yeah, when you necessity. Need, when necessity. And I was at the point in my life where I just I started, uh, I needed to be creative. I, you know, I've always been a creative person, but I had nothing really to show for it, nothing that stuck to the wall. And I was looking for ways to get paper, have people print for me. Um, I just needed, I needed support. And I contacted um, Solis, and you guys said, well, yeah, you know, send us a work. We'll see if you fit. I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> they're not, they're not Portfolio me. review. Yeah, but then you, the you got in touch with me yeah. and like we just started working and something amazing happened. And I've spoken about this before is that, you know, you, you work with printers, you work with curators and stuff. And a lot of times it's of your own strength and your own cr creation. But at Solus, you guys gave me courage. You gave me confidence. And I got to tell you something, like the fact that somebody called back and said, you know what, we liked your work. Yeah. And then said, you know, it just so happens that we have somebody who does work that you are going to really, you know, accent. It's so you guys going to be good. Oh, you're talking it. about the show with Elaine Chow. Elaine Chow, Chow yeah. yeah. And, and it was like, too. and you guys gave me a, a, a dual exhibition. And yeah. I was like, selling my work like hotcakes. Yeah, you it. sold out your half of the show, I think. Yeah. And it was... was it was like, you know what? And it's just the confidence. So yeah, to get you to do it. How many times have you started something in life? It was like, I want to try this. But then you just like veer away. Yeah. Every once in a while, places like Solus comes up that helps stick it to the wall. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what happened with me. And shoot, oh. 40, now I'm 50. And yeah. I'm still doing it three and a half years later. Yeah. I mean, it's true. It's a perseverance. I was saying on a video on TikTok the other day that like the number one trait of a successful artist is perseverance <laughs> because 
you have to keep doing it. You can't stop and you're going to get a ton of, you're going to have a lot of like not movement. You know what I mean? It's going to be a lot of stuff that's not inspiring. That's not amazing that you build up this work and it's going to feel like nobody's watching that nobody cares. Uh, it's going to feel like nobody wants it. And that doesn't really matter. Cause like, uh, you know, that's, it's just, you have to do it. If you don't have that body of work, then no one takes you seriously. So yeah. you can't make a body of work. If you are worrying too much about what people are, think. are you worried about what? TikTok. Oh yeah, I guess we should talk about the TikTok ban. What? They're gonna ban TikTok. They're threatening to ban TikTok again in America for national security reasons. So I mean, ooh, yeah, well, it's big. A lot of people are upset. Yeah, people are upset. I mean, obviously people are upset, but it's funny the culture of TikTok. I don't know if you're on TikTok here. I use Instagram Reels. I watch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I have like a weird thing where. I guess I'll have to use Instagram reels if TikTok goes down. Cause I'm, I'm like one of those hermogeny boomers almost where I'm like short videos for TikTok, Instagrams for photos, YouTube's for long content. Stop <laughs> fucking putting everything in Instagram, you know? Well, you know, as an artist, when you're on Instagram and you're looking yeah. at your work and what your peers are doing and then like the reels show up, Pop up yeah. it's just really freaking they're, convenient. They're really pushing them really hard, but I wanted to go back a little bit more and talk about your the impetus of you creating work, not necessarily okay. like because you when you came to Solus, you want me to say it, don't you? No, what, what you want me to say? say that I see little elves and beings, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we bonded. With yeah. her. She's like, oh, he sees things. <laughs> no, but like, no, what? Not not necessarily what's going on with your work because your work is no. Like, that's you're why I do it, though. It. Yeah, yeah, but like, when, what was the first one? What was the first time when you uh, like Yakos. were messing around with it? Yeah, but yeah. Yakov's not like what you do. The stuff you do now is like the... the, the but he the was the first picture. Symmetrical stuff. Yeah, so I think the impotence of that was... Did I say that right? Impetus? Yeah, impetus? So. Not the impotence. But. Not the impetence. The impotence <laughs> of that's it me. is something else. <laughs> that's me. Uh, I think what got me uh, into it was I was walking through cemeteries. Mm. And um, I grew up in cemeteries. I like... I lived in Glendale in my teenage years in the cemetery belt. And so I got really comfortable huge there. Huge cemetery. Yeah. They're all, yeah, they're, they're huge. And there's really interesting, cool stuff. And they're like fountains made out of stone. Like, that is cool. There, there's some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so as I got older, I always felt comfortable there. And I was walking around the cemetery and I was taking pictures. Cause I just got done taking like a really good picture of one of my coworkers. Right. And it came out good and gave me confidence. Everyone's like, yeah, do this. So I was walking to the cemetery and I was taking pictures of the of the gravel and the, of the walkway, the stonework mm. and stuff, and like fallen trees and all this cool stuff. And I, I saw something. I was like, well, "What is that?" And I, for some reason, I decided to go into a glitch program because I was thinking, "Oh, glitch is fun. You can move things around, glitch freeze is cool. the frame." Yeah. I like the glitch. I like the glitch. You oh. freeze the frame, and then like you freeze that frame, and then you do something with it. It's like because you know when you when you move something. If you freeze a random frame, that's like a, a second out of history that would have been gone. It, w it wouldn't have been captured. It wouldn't have been there. Right. And I saw something. I was like, what happens if I, in this glitch program, if I made it symmetrical and I opened it up? And like I saw like demons and stuff. I was like, wow, this Started is cool. straight up hallucinating. No, like, yeah. Wow. No, but hey, hey. You know, the heart wants what the heart wants. Not that <laughs> I, not, but anyway. Um. <laughs> Show the pentagram. Yeah, oh, Show the yeah. pentagram. No, but so, yeah. <laughs> no. So then it kept on happening. And then I noticed, like, if I take a picture and nothing comes out of it, well, if I take 150 pictures of it, eventually I'm going to find something that opens up. Cool. Different That's angles. Dedication. Yeah. Different angles, different lighting, different, you know, uh, depths. Like, if you go into flowers. Yeah. And um, I kept on finding things. I was like, oh. So, All right, this is cool. In a weird way, like that's really your process. You're not just like taking a photo and flipping around. You're you're searching for the thing in it, and then yeah. you have to find it, and then you lock it in place. Yeah, I, I honestly, out. instead of being called myself an artist, I really and I generally mean this. I feel I'm more like a hunter. Yeah, like, I'm trying to find like these beings, you know, and um, it's fun because it, it's humbling too. Because when I see something. I'm like, this is very clearly like a king. You guys look at it. Oh, that looks like a skid mark. It's, you know what I mean? Like it, it's like it doesn't, but it's it's humbling when you see something and someone else doesn't. Well, it, it's amazing because then that means that you can see a lot within a skid mark. Yeah, king yeah. skid mark. King skid mark. King oh, skid I'm mark. smelling a new street king. <laughs> Folks, We're going to have to mark team up, up the new no. banks. <laughs> street art skid mark. No, no, no. No, but it's, it was, it was, uh, you know, um, 
just to be able to see things was humbling. Yeah. And uh, I continued doing it because of that. Everyone's like, well, why don't you go more into your portraiture work? That was really cool. Or, right. Or then I was like, no, man, I like doing, working with the flowers and the ice and the snow. And I think that's a really important thing, too, is like once you find the thing you like doing, like that's, you have to keep doing that. And you want to keep doing it. And I, I feel like we, as artists, always have this like struggle uh, between what we want to create, having like some vision of something we want to create, and then the actual process of creating it. I feel like most yeah. frustration with art comes out of this like inability to uh, do the thing you want to do. And it's much more important to just play and just have fun with your materials and just be able to actually get into the process. Otherwise, you'll never push a process any further, you know? Well, it did cause some problems with, like, me and my wife, too, though, the art. Uh -oh. Because, no, well, you know, like, so I would take, you know, do a piece of work, and I would show it to my wife. And yeah, no she's, wife wants to hear I'm turning into an artist. And she, no, no, artist. no, no, like, no. She's, oh, no. Like, she's like, wow, what is that? Like, I see, like, happiness. I'm like, oh, that's actually a symmetrical picture of my ball sack. And yeah. she would be like, what? And she like, <laughs> yelling. So now whenever I show her work, she's like, that's not your ass cheeks, is it? I'm like, no, no, I swear to God, it's Wait, not. Kit, did you ever show the piece of your ball sack? Yeah, have I seen so it? I actually, piece and I don't know So it. I have probably about, like, 30 or 40 pieces about on my balls. website that are, like, my my my. Gooch, my, 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 like all different the types taint. of things. Armpits, yeah, the taint, everything. But no one, I never put it up for people to buy. No, this what? is the show that you need to have. <laughs> this is, this is, this is the, the unlock show. This yeah. is the secret show. The ball sex, the armpits, the gooch, the yeah, taint. Yeah, but then also I, uh, I did, I did some, something that is discouraged. What's that? Like, not that that By was who? occurred. <laughs> not that that was discouraged. No, I think. No, so I, I went encouraged. and watched some porn and right. then I, I froze it. Um, right center on the woman's, you know, vaginal area. Uh -huh. and then I would do the zooming, vagine. zooming, and then I did a few pieces from a woman's oh, vagina, cool. and it looked awesome, dude. Yeah. But the thing is, is like I can't even put those on my website because it's from a different source of media. Yeah, well, but it's completely recreated, and, and yeah, delay, it's it's not the original. Yeah, if it doesn't, if you look at I'm it, you see don't these see works. it. Why yeah, yeah, I'll show you some. I don't think you're an <laughs> issue. Like if if you're doing your thing with it and, and transforming it enough. That's a thing, you know, like transformative. And yeah. earlier, this actually kind of pins back to the conversation we were having earlier about like, you know, mimicking each other and how art is so self-referential. Like, I don't think anything on the planet is more self-referential than art, even memes. Like, you know how you have to know the last meme to get this one? It's like a play on the last meme and so on and so on. Yeah. The art world's like that. I mean, look at Damien Hirst. Like, Damien Hirst has made him... Um, a very one of the biggest artists in the world and you could take a lot of his movements and his series and compare them apples to apples with uh, artists from the 70s other artists are done and like they look it's like literally the same concept and everything like the dots it was done by somebody else the crystal skull done by somebody else the shark in the tank done by somebody else what was first crystal skull vodka or his skull <laughs> did he steal dan Aykroyd's no idea? he didn't steal dan Aykroyd's idea he stole um another artist from the 70s idea so dan Aykroyd kind of stole his idea no, no not the crystal skulls idea. are didn't you see that indiana jones yeah movie? Doesn't crystal dan skulls Aykroyd, are a thing yeah but doesn't dan Aykroyd have a crystal skull yeah, he stole it from the Illuminati, no, 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 Anunnaki, his skull, aliens. <laughs> his skull is crystal. I don't think so. But that oh, you're getting confused with Coneheads. That oh, Coneheads. <laughs> no, <laughs> right? no Man, I just think that from Dan Aykroyd has a crystal skull. I met him once. Yeah? I used to work at... Um, Did you ask him, can I see your skull? No, I want... I should, you know... <laughs> Looking backwards is what do they say? 50, yeah. 50, 50, 20, 20, 25, 20, 20, Hindsight is 20, 20. That's the I phrase. should have. Yeah. Um, he's a big guy. He's probably I, glad you didn't. It was crazy. I worked at um, the Avalon, which was previously the Limelight. Yeah. I can't even oh, believe God. I worked there. I was Limelight. a promoter. That's amazing. I was wow. a promoter for some reason. I don't, again, I don't even know how the hell I had this if, job. If I worked there for like a year. Listeners, I'm up to be aware of the Limelight's history. It was a church in uh, New York here that during the height of like the club kids, the, the number one Michael club. Allen, uh, Michael Alleg club kids Elite, era yeah. of the <clears> early 90s, like there was t tons of raves and parties in this church. It's a mall now. It's a yeah. mall. Yeah. I used to go to Barrett Jones parties there. They used to give you a... Um, like a uh, business card mm. and it had Bear Jones information on it and you would go through the side entrance up and above everything and then come back down to the main room but you used to get it for free. I used That's to love cool. that. 
that was that was fun. Spiritual parties. Yeah, it's our nice. I got to we see cut... Jean Paul Gaultier's work. Oh, is... Jean Paul Gaultier. Right, is that his name? <gasps> yeah, that's a fashion designer. Yeah, <gasps> Madonna walked around in uh, the spike like, boot. It was like clear clothing. <clears throat> you know who's doing that now? Is Kanye's new wifey. Oh, yeah, I mean, she all the time. There, did like, you read the, the new article with Madonna? She yelled at a woman who was in a wheelchair at her concert. And <gasps> yes, said, stand up. Yes. She was yelling at him, stand up. <laughs> what is that guy that used to throw dirty laundry that at sucks people? For Madonna, the religious I feel guy. Bad. What? He would throw dirty laundry at people and they start to walk again. Oh, you're talking about Bi- uh, Mr. Hinn or whatever? Like the, B- uh, the, Benny Hinn. It's Benny Hinn, right? Benny Hinn. Not oh Benny Hill, God. but Benny Hinn. Right. He would throw he would dirty you. laundry. He would slap you and spin on you. He would, it was kick dirty you. laundry. Yeah, yeah people like He would send you on fire. Yeah, they start yeah. foaming <laughs> at the mouth. They're like, Jesus. Yeah. Do you ever see the memes, um, the memes on uh, online where they would be like the street fighter oh music. i did see and, and he, he like shoots this. the fireball yes. yeah no it's it's great <laughs> yeah. i love that one that that is a classic that's art that's art <laughs> of course lightning bolt lightning bolt lightning bolt yeah lightning bolt <laughs> that's an og video too lightning bolt video yeah. i'm gonna Marking. burst in joy this yeah. is really his happy time explosion it really yeah, is yeah, yeah. Happy happy explosion. Comes on, has a great time it's, it's a, a lucky happy time, time. And you're blessed for the rest of the day when you come on lucky time explosion can i just can i please have your permission no Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. What do you What do you want? Pew 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 <laughs> pew, pew, pew 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 pew. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it with us. I should have let you do it in the intro. No, that's oh, yours, man. man. That's yours. I could try to steal it, but they can never. Take I can the harness that power. I mean, I think I, about churches. I stole it from like Luigi uh, Mario, or whatever. You know, it's something. Wow. I thought it was wow. just like. Oh yeah. You know that Mario sound. Wow. Yeah, and that was especially so in this, Mario Three. Yeah. Don't I sue thought me, this Nintendo. Has to do with per- churches. No. Pews, pews, oh. pews, pews, pews. Grown. I, love I thought it was like a religious thing. It, it is now, yeah. man. Well, so we only have like three minutes left. What's coming up for you, Eric? What are you doing? Well, uh, I am partnering with a chef in New York City ooh. that has multiple places, oh, um, nice. establishments in the Lower East Side, and we are working on these incredible artist dinners. Mm. And we got some really good artists flying in to do this with us. And Super cool. I can't give too many details right fair, now. Fair, fair. But in a world of gestation where food <laughs> goes into your belly and comes back out, there is one man standing at a table of food and he ate it. No, but uh, hey. <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm going to be doing that. Um, just creating some more. Um, do you have a title for the project or is that top secret? Still it too? is actually top secret fair still enough, because enough. it's going to be pretty elaborate. I actually, you know what? One thing I do want to do, no. um, I'm hoping to be working with Morgan. Oh, that's right. No, doing some collage stuff, about. man. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that because, um, I know we have to hang up soon, Yeah. but I like the idea of taking already made materials mm-hmm. And being able to put them to create something whole. Yeah. And and that's kind of like with why I like my artwork. Because when you look, when you do something symmetrical, you have to have like one hand tied behind your arm. Because it's already, the concept's already there. You have to hope that when you flip it, that nature will make it something. And I think that's kind of with collaging. I think with collaging, it's like you're the creative force, the quarterback. The other person has the inspiration in there. That's why I have a lot of respect for you. Thank you. But you're taking, Thank you're you. taking like the the broken pieces of other people's lives and the magazines and stuff, and like, you know, the the jacket that you never bought that you found in the in Vogue or whatever, and you're putting that together and telling a story. So I kind of like would love to be able to work in that process with you because. That's the true storyteller. You got to come to Collage Night in May. Yeah, it's yes. coming up. Well, tell yeah, me about we'll, that. How we'll, does Collage it's work? International Collage Day. <gasps> and we're going to do a show here uh, of collage work. And before and after and around that, we will be doing some collage workshops where we come hang out and make collage. It's a for real. It's going to be good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. So we're, we'll be looking out for your top secret food project. It reminds me of something I saw a while ago. It was like $1,500 a head um, desserts with famous artists like Marina oh, Abramovich nice. and stuff. So. You know, I'm excited to see that and to come to one and to eat the food. Yes. I want to eat all the art. There, it's only going to be a thousand dollars a person. That's that's actually good. That's yeah. actually really good. For <laughs> I, got, I got some loose change hanging around. I can, that's, uh, no, I that's can actually good work. for for something like that. You yeah. Know what I well, mean? like in the first one, we're going to be having like they're going to get porcelain plates. 
Ooh. that are hand painted by the artists. Nice. Like, That's with, wild. comes with your. Dad. All right, we better go before you spill too many beans. All yeah, right, right, so we're we're on the front, dude. We We're don't want you. Put them in a bag. No beans. No, no beans. beans. No right. beans. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. We'll see you next week on Monday. Bye. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon. A green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York. Helping artists make cool shit since 2016.